Hello everyone. This is going to be question number nine from the book of questions. This is the 2013 edition. Uh, I still haven't completed that uh, math problem that I mentioned last time. Uh, it, it's certainly not to the point where it's in a, where I can present it, you know, in a coherent way. So, uh, so, so there you go. Uh, instead, we have a question from the book of questions. Now, this one's kind of an interesting one. It says, on a typical Sunday, 10,000 people visit the Louvre in Paris. If a wicked sorcerer threatened to vaporize all the museum's visitors or all of its art, sparing one or the other based on your plea, which would you save? Assume the sorcerer will obliterate both the people and the art if you don't choose. And it also goes on to, uh, with a, 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 a supplemental uh, bit, what if any fruits of our culture are worth more than even a million lives? For example, what if all the music or fiction of the past century was at risk? Okay, so, so this is, uh, an, it's an important question. It's, a, it's a, an interesting one. And I fully expect that uh, there, different people will have different answers. Now, as far as making me choose between the people and the things at a museum, doesn't matter what museum it is, I'm going to choose the people. Let the people live, destroy the things. That's a no-brainer to me. I, I, I just, that is the choice. This isn't one of those moral choices where if you uh, flip a lever, you can have one person die. If you don't flip the lever, three people die. And, uh, uh, you know, that, that, that is not that kind of a moral conundrum. Uh, this one is much more clear. Uh, and I value human lives above things. Uh, especially cultural things, which don't have a direct application to human survival. I'm not saying they're not important, okay? That, to be clear, I'm not saying that the cultural artifacts are unimportant or that they shouldn't be saved if they can be reasonably. But if it's a choice between all the people visiting the museum and all of the artifacts in the museum, the people are worth more. The people are what are, are how the cultural artifacts have value. The people appreciating the culture, that's what gives it value. And people create culture. We can create more. Uh, no matter how many of our cultural artifacts are destroyed, we can create more. We can always make more cultural artifacts. Culture is continually being created. It's one of the things we do. So there's, there's no reason to uh, prefer the art in the museum over the people visiting the museum. Let's save the people. And then we'll go ahead and make more stuff to replace what's in the museum. Sure, it's not uh, all of the cool ancient stuff or whatever. But you know what? I'd rather have the people. It's just the way of it. Now, is there any cultural artifact that is worth, worth you know, destroying thousands or hundreds of thousands or millions of people's lives for? No, there isn't. Uh, that is one of the ways massive wars get started. And quite frankly, uh, as I said before, we can always make new cultural things. Culture's always evolving. It's always being created. There's always new stuff. It's what people do. As long as the people are there to do it. Now, if you start throwing away people's lives to save cultural artifacts, well, then you end up in a situation where you could very easily run out of people and you can end up with large back and forth wars and things like that. And it just is not a good situation. So it's much better to let the cultural artifacts die than to let the people die. Now, I will put an asterisk on that 
and say, if there are people who voluntarily risk their lives to save the cultural artifacts, then they should be allowed to do that unless there's some compelling reason they shouldn't be allowed to do that. They're at the, say they're needed somewhere else urgently. So if the, if the, the people doing, risking their lives believe that these artifacts are worth their lives to save, then let them save it. And actually coming back to the, muse, the, the Louvre and the art and the patrons, if all of the patrons could be polled and agreed that they would give up their lives to save the artifacts, the art, then I could, I could justify the choice going to save the art. But if even one of them dissents, even one of them does not believe it's worth their life, does not wish to die to save the art, then no, we don't kill the person to save the art. That's, it's not a hard choice, I don't think. Uh, I can see how people might come to the opposite conclusion, that maybe the art's more important. Uh, but, you know, like, think about it. Uh, you know, sure, we've got 7 billion people on the planet right now. We can lose 10,000, that's, or a million, and it won't make a difference. Sure. Okay, that, that, uh, that makes sense, right? But what's to stop this sorcerer from coming back day after day and repeating the same ultimatum? And, uh, you know, with one person or another. And how long before that 10,000, you know, you know, obviously if people are dying going to the museum, they're going to stop going. Uh, but let's assume they don't, and there's always he's always going to kill 10,000 people or destroy all the art in the museum. And if he keeps doing that, if it happens often enough, suddenly that 7 billion people on the planet doesn't look like all that many. It doesn't take all that long for, say, he does it daily. It doesn't take all that long to start making real uh, dense in populations. Uh, even at 10,000 a day, uh, it still makes a noticeable impact. Uh, of course, it depends on the demographics. But what's to say he stays at 10,000? Maybe he goes, oh, well, I like killing people, so let's move it up to 100,000 or a million. It can escalate really quickly, and you don't want to let that, that camel's nose into the tent. You want, to, you want to avoid that slippery slope effect where, oh, well, I got away with it. You know, maybe some other megalomaniac or something or what or wicked sorcerer or whatever will get away with it, too. And we'll try. And maybe it's not art this time. You know, maybe it's uh, the complete the Library of Congress collection and he's going to kill 300 million people or something like that. You know, it. Uh, they kill all the population of the United States or the Library of Congress. Uh, well, that one is a much easier no-brainer. You save the 300 million people in the United States and let the Library of Congress die. Uh, you know, so if 10,000 people's okay, when's it not okay? What's the line? Why? And quite frankly, the only line that's easy to justify is zero. No people. We'll just make new, new art. Like, like, seriously, how would this be any different than a natural disaster taking out the museum uh, when nobody's there, say? Or uh, a massive cataclysm uh, wiping out uh, cultural art artifacts. Or some... Uh, wingnut totalitarian regime destroying art, you know, or bombarding massive uh, art installations to destroy them, or 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 what have you. So, uh, really, uh, that's that's what it comes down to. I I don't believe, that even if the entire cultural history, uh, the entire body of work that the entire extant body of work 
of all of human history, all of human culture, was at risk. I would not choose to kill anyone to save it. Volunteers, sure. If, if the volunteers are there and they're acceptable to whatever the situation is, sure, fine. Let the volunteers risk their lives. But I am not going to force anyone to do it. Let the people taking the risk decide if it's worth the risk. And I suspect a number, a, a sufficient number of people would think it's worth the risk. And as a result, uh, many times in history, great works have been saved by people taking this type of risk. You know, getting works out of war zones and so on. But the people doing it believed it was worth the risk. And that's fine. It's forcing people to involuntarily take that risk. That's the part that I disagree with. And it's not that I think the cultural artifacts, our, our history and so on, is not worth anything. It's certainly worth something. I mean, it's worth different things to different people. But it's, you know, if you had didn't have to kill people uh, to, to keep it, then it becomes a lot more reasonable to expend resources to save it. But human lives, they're far more important than things, the things that people have created over history. And you know what? Those things are going to disappear into the dust eventually anyway. Uh, assuming humanity survives uh, into the future, a great many things that we treasure so highly today, culturally and otherwise, will be lost to antiquity. That's just the way the universe works. Things get old, things break, things disappear. Things crumble. Entropy happens. So if humans are still around in 50,000 years, 100,000 years, a few million years, there's a pretty good chance at least most of the body of 20th century work, music or literature, say, will be lost anyway. Yet humanity will continue and will have its its own its new replace its replacements to the culture of today and yesteryear. So culture is replaceable. Uh, and the great destruction of cultural artifacts will lead to its own cultural artifacts. That's humans for you. So it's not as big of a loss to have the cultural stuff go away as uh, it might first seem. Anyway, uh, that's probably enough rambling on this one. Uh, if you want to have some fun, uh, make a drinking game of it, uh, rewatch the video, and every time I say cultural or some variation of that, have a drink or something like that. Uh, it seems I said it way too many times. Anyway, uh, I pretty much said my piece there, so uh, I guess I'll, I'll leave off here. Uh, if you liked the video or you didn't leave a like or a dislike, it may not make much of a difference for uh, YouTube's algorithms and so on. But you know what? It'll let me know you liked the video or you didn't like the video. Like, seriously. And if you want to be notified of future videos, yeah, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. I think that's that stupid bell icon. And if you've watched this far, thanks for watching.